Welcome to Municipal Affairs, I'm Christopher Brown. Now in today's exciting episode, we're focusing on one of the most significant gatherings of municipal leaders in the province of Manitoba. That is the upcoming AMM Fall Convention. Every November, over 800 delegates from across the province come together for the Association of Manitoba Municipalities Annual General Meeting. This year, from November 25th to 27th, the convention will host elections for the AMM's Executive Committee, including the positions of President and two Vice Presidents, each serving a two-year term. One of those candidates running to become the next president of the Manitoba Municipal Association is Ian Drool, Reeve of Harrison Park. Now, we spoke with Ian about his candidacy, his vision for the role, and what he hopes to bring to Manitoba's municipalities if elected. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Reeve, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me and talking about your bid to become the next president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. And I want to start there. What made you decide to throw your hat in the ring and decide to run to become the next president of AMM? Well, thanks for the question. Yeah, I, uh, you know, when, when Cam was running, I wasn't even thinking about it. Um, and then when Cam decided he wasn't going to run, then I kind of started thinking about it a little bit because... I feel there's a lot of issues um, throughout Manitoba that aren't making it to Winnipeg fast enough. And so that's where I decided, you know what, time to start, uh, you know, making some noise and getting some issues to the table. And uh, so that's where I decided, you know what, let's do this. Let's make the run for it. Um, I'm at a point in my life where I can make this happen. Um, I've got a small business on the side and, and a small farm on the side as well. So I've got you know, 21 years of business experience behind me. You know, I've been on council now for um, since 2014. So I've got, you know, two terms under my belt and then, you know, two years in as Reeve and two years in as uh, district rep for AMM. So I've kind of got a lot of experience. So I thought, you know what, let's make the try for it. And um, I've met a lot of council members throughout the past two years uh, throughout this province, you know, working with uh, different issues from the vet boards to short term rentals to the zebra mussel issue, healthcare and roads. I've met a lot of uh, council members in Reeves and uh, I, uh, I feel I've made some good friendships and I think that's why I decided, you know what, let's do this. You talk about the plethora of issues that Manitoba municipalities are facing today. And I was recently, I, well, that's where we first met, was in Brandon, Manitoba at the spring convention of AMM. And I sat down with multiple Reeves councillors and even mayors from across the province. And their issues are relatively similar, but there are so many unique issues that individual municipalities are facing what in your background gives you the idea that you would be the best to be able to help champion those macro issues along with those individual issues that municipalities are facing with today? Well, I think, like I said, with uh, 21 years of being in business, you, you learn to juggle a lot of different things and, and wear, wear a lot of different hats, right? So that's where my experience, I think, is going to come from for this job and uh, being able to delegate, you know, and get people working on certain issues and topics you know we have a small business where we do a lot of different things um so we're not one trick pony kind of deal so that's where i think that my experience both as a business person and as a person that can delegate and uh you know do jobs on my own and get people to do it i think would be really good let's talk about some of those issues for a few minutes if you don't mind and how you see yeah. your role as president and as the association 
advocating for those in Ottawa because you uh, in in Winnipeg, I should say, start off with Winnipeg before yeah. we go to Ottawa. Well, yeah, but, exactly. Um, you said you want to try to bring some of those issues to Winnipeg. Uh, one of the big reoccurring themes that I heard about while I was in Brandon talking to members of AMM was rural health care, policing, and then there is also harm reduction, which is taking a pretty center stage in a lot of communities today. How do you see yourself advocating from a rural perspective, but also bringing that urban perspective as a uh, read from a rural community? Yeah, that's the big thing. Like AMM has the four big pillars that's been focused on, right? Like, you know, it's infrastructure dollars and you've got your crime and healthcare, and, uh, you know, you've got your big four education as well. And that that's great. Those are our big four. Like, you know, you talk to any rural municipality, they're dealing with all these issues. You know, crime is, is a huge problem, uh, especially in some areas and, you know, drug use and, um, we just, we need to start really figuring out how we're going to solve these issues. Right. So, um, I think that's where, you know, having a new perspective, maybe some new ideas to the table might be a, a good thing right now and stuff. And, uh, you know, like I said, crime is, is a federal one. That's where FCM comes in, you know, because, you know, it starts with, uh, bail reform, right? That's the big thing, you know, like you gotta, you gotta start there and, uh, you know, it, it's, there's so many of those big issues that I don't think a small municipality can, can even tackle. Right. So the big four are there, but then there's a lot of other issues that we need to start looking at and um, get focused on as well and, and get those into the table as well. Do you, do you feel, and I hate to ask, I hate to pick on Scott Gilling, Gill, Gillingham for a second, but I kind of have to, but do you feel like, provincial governments usually focus on what's going on in Winnipeg rather than these rural municipalities like Harrison Park or even Northern communities. Because when I was in a at AMM, the, the, the concern was that it's Winnipeg because it's what it was just after an election. So that's where their most seats are. So do you hope that with you as president, you'd be able to bring that, uh, change that the provincial government needs to start focusing, not just in Winnipeg, but in these smaller communities as well. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for as well, because like I said, yes, I, Winnipeg has its issues, but I mean, its issues are similar to ours, but they're not the same, right? They're, they're a different scope of issues. So yeah, because you're, you know, your ledge is in Winnipeg, your MLAs are in Winnipeg, they see those issues of crime and, uh, you know, and then of the healthcare and the waiting rooms and stuff. But there is these other issues that are out in rural Manitoba that we're not focused on, right? So that's where I was hoping to bring that rural focus to the table and uh and shine a light on some of these other topics for sure do you have uh, the ability to call a spade a spade when you're speak when you're dealing with the premier or the leader of the progressive conservatives the interim leader of the progressive conservatives because sometimes you'll agree and sometimes you'll disagree can you call people out when it might be harmful for municipalities on issues that the province is spearheading Yes, um, because I don't hold back. Like I said, I always tell people like it is. I, I've always been that way. Um, you know, even with rate payers, I try to be as honest as I can without hurting their feelings, right? Um, but yeah, I, I always try to make sure that people know exactly where I come from and, and what my, my stance is for sure. And I think that's what we need is we need some of them to sit down and say that, okay, this is the, the issue here listen, we got to deal with this, right? And uh, stop, you know, putting it off, saying, you know, we'll deal with it later. We'll deal with it later. And what would be that big issue for you right now? Hypothetically, if you are elected in November, you're going to have to hit the ground running and you're going to have to hit the ground running because there's many issues that the province is dealing with right now. I'm just going through the list that I have. Uh, you have the 2050 plan that they have been changing and dealing with. They have the harm reduction plan. They're trying to fix the infrastructure deficit, especially around roads in more rural communities. What's priority number one for you if you are elected? Well, it's all those issues that you really have to start working on. But I mean, you know, as small municipalities, we're all struggling with infrastructure dollars is the big thing, because, you know, whether it be replacing a fire truck or rebuilding a fire hall or water and sewer lines, you know, or road repairs or bridge repairs, 
infrastructure dollars is a huge thing and you know small municipalities are truly struggling with it but then yeah the crime reduction and you know the the addiction side of it you know we have to really start focusing how we're going to deal with that and and to me that's not going to be at the provincial table that's going to be at the fcm table because i mean like i said you know bail reform and uh figuring out what we're going to do with repeat offenders has got to be top of the table here. You know, uh, I, I take it back to, you know, when we had a rash of break-ins a month or so ago in our municipality and, you know, you find out it's the same guy that's been doing it for over 10 years and he's been in and out of jail, you know, like that's frustrating from an RCMP side. And it's frustrating for me as a municipal leader because, okay, obviously jail and reform isn't working for this guy. So what do we do? Right. And I I guarantee that's not just in my municipality. I guarantee that's in northern Manitoba, eastern Manitoba and southern Manitoba that are dealing with the same repeat offenders. Right. So that's what I say. Like, you know, a lot of these issues, we got to hit the ground running. But I mean, it's not just at the provincial table. It's at the federal table, too. But what can municipalities do in the short term as the next potentially the next president of AMM? You, You you and I probably will both agree that. The federal government is not going to change on this issue the moment you become president or if in 10 years, in 10 weeks time after you become president. So what can the municipalities look at besides the advocacy work? Because I know they have a great program in Portage the Prairie that they've rolled out to help curb some of these crime issues. But what can AMM do to advocate from a municipal slash provincial level in the short term while we're waiting on the federal government to do what they're supposed to be doing and that's where i think the best practices of other municipalities might work you know like i said or sharing ideas what other provinces have done right so that's where going to the table and finding out what other ones have done and seeing how it worked or didn't work in those communities and trying to bring them back here right so that's what we're trying to do is find um you know best practices and share them with municipalities and that's where you have like webinars or you know one-on-one sessions to kind of explain you know okay this is what X municipality did or Y municipality did, you know, it worked there. So can we bring that and adopt it into ours? Right. So I think that's what we need to look at as best practices and sharing ideas back and forth. I want to turn to the organization as a whole. We talked about some issues, but I want to turn to the organization as a whole. And I'm going to ask a pointed question. I asked, I'm asking this to all the candidates. So please do not take offense to this if you're listening to this, (laughs) but how will your presidency be different than Cam Blight's presidency? Um, I think, like I said, being a more rural, uh, like he was from Portage, which is, is sort of rural, but it's not, it's, it's a small city. Whereas I'm from rural Manitoba, um, you know, farming background, uh, that's how I grew up kind of thing. Um, so for me, I think it'd be just a more rural perspective, right? I don't have a city perspective type thing. So I think that's where it's going to be a little bit different. And like I said, um, I, I know all about, you know, tough times and you know the families are struggling right now i see it in a lot of communities throughout manitoba that i've been in uh so you know just having that different perspective i think is is going to be key in that and that's where i feel there always needs to be change you know uh the the days where you know people ran for 20 or 30 years on council is great because it does you know give that um what's the word i'm looking for i guess it gives that perspective of you know what we've done in the past but i mean we always need new ideas at the table right so that's where i i feel that my my presidency will be a little different so what new ideas will you bring to the governance or even the amm board because you'll be working with the staff members of amm but also dennis volkov uh the executive director of amm so what ideas and fresh perspectives are you going to bring to that organization as well because advocacy is only one part of the or uh, the work that you'll be doing what do you see as the role of amm if you're elected president well the one thing is is we got to start sharing more as amm um i'll basically tell it like it is i mean i've been a director for amm <laughs> And, um, you know, anytime that I've brought ideas to the table, uh, it's been an executive decision not to champion those ideas. And uh, I feel that everybody around that table, doesn't matter if you're a director or, you know, an executive, we're all one team, we're all one person. And you know what, all ideas should be thought out and, uh, and planned out. And sharing more with rural municipalities is a big thing. Um, I've, I've talked to a lot of municipalities over the past month 
Um, and everybody said it feels that, especially rural, smaller communities that don't meet with AMM regularly, feel that AMM is a secret society. And they don't get enough information back from them. And I, I said, I struggle with that idea because you guys are funding us as AMM, right? You pay your dues. And if you're not getting your dollars worth out of it, then we got a problem, right? And, and it goes down to the same as FCM. Um, you know, I talk to municipalities and I say, what is what do you get for FCM? Like, do you, do you get your bang for your buck? And they said, honestly, we don't. Like, you know, they, they struggle to get, you know, their dollars worth out of that. So I think that's where it needs to start is, you know, there has to be this open and transparency and, you know, people feeling that they are involved with AMM and their decision-making. That's the big thing. So will you champion the small rural municipalities? Because it, I, I I can already hear the voices that are going to send me emails about this question and I apologize. Yeah, no, but, that's fine. No, but I, I want I, I want to ask this question correctly. And so I apologize if I have to take two seconds here. But what is going to change? Because the organization is still going to be there. There's people in that organization that are still going to be there. Is it just you're going to come in like a wrecking ball and change it all up, or will it be a collaborative approach? It's got to be a collaborative approach. Like I said, just because I'm a president or changing. Uh, or executives changing? No, uh, I, I feel that I'm a team leader. That's where I would come in as a team leader and say that, you know what, we have to do it together and figure out what the best practices is. And that's the big thing. It won't be just the champion for rural Manitoba. You've got a director from Winnipeg. Um, you know, should Brandon have a seat at the table? Possibly looking at that, you know. Uh, you've got your northern directors. You know, are they bringing their ideas? is for northern manitoba to the table right so you've got to take all those ideas together and figure out what's best practice right and that's where you know i feel that you know our first thing we got to do is as uh, as a team is sit down and have a strategic plan meeting where everybody puts everything on the table and we all have an idea of where we want to go with amm um, strategic plans are great they have to be revisited often because it has to make sure that it's aligning with what everybody else is, is saying. So I feel that that'll be, you know, step one is a strategic plan meeting with the board. And um, then we go forward from there. Your advocacy work and your, your presidency wouldn't be solely within Manitoba. You would automatically be guaranteed a seat within FCM, the Federation of Canadian municipalities, which we've mentioned a few times already, but mm -hmm. Are you prepared to be away from Manitoba and even Harrison Park for the amount of time that you would possibly need to be? Because FCM meets on a regular basis in Ottawa or even across the country. And as president, you would have to be there advocating on the board level, but also in Ottawa with MPs and cabinet ministers and even the prime minister. Do you have the time to do that? So that's what I did before I accepted this nomination. As I sat down with my council, and one-on-one -on -one, I talked to all of them including my two deputy Reeves and I said okay are you guys willing to step up and help me run the municipality you know I talked to our CAO um, and got him on board with the idea as well you know that I may be away right and um, you know via Zoom I can still come into a meeting if I have to be away at another meeting right um, they're on board with it right so they're going to help me out at that level um, I talked to my wife about it and my family. Um, I've got the them most on important board. person, right? The most important yes, person. I, I you're gonna... to her, uh, because we do have a small family farm as well on the side. So I had to have her on board with this idea as well. And, uh, and staff, I've got a, I've got a good guy that's worked with me for over a year now. And um, I'm very confident in leaving him in charge, you know, if I have to be away. Right. So it's, it's kind of all those keys that I had to put together before I said yes to this and I wanted to make sure I had the whole team in place because I knew this is possibly 200 days a year on the road or more more we don't know um, but I wanted to make sure I had everybody in place to do this so yeah I, I've got all our keys in place and I, I think everybody can handle it so I would be very comfortable leaving if I had to go. And what would your priority be to advocate on um, 
Manitoba's issues at that FCM board uh, because I, I I speak to FCM members on a regular basis and they just went through a change of leadership as well. Mm -hmm. I from when I when I speak to FCM, they're talking about homelessness. They're talking about uh, infrastructure dollars. But when you talk to uh, Manitoba municipalities, which I've done, they're talking about they're talking about firearms and they're talking about policing and they're talking about bail reform. So how do you get FCM to change their perspectives to focus on more munis Manitoba municipalities issues as well as those issues that the Federation is also dealing with? Because it's not just Manitoba that's dealing with the crime and the bail reform and stuff. It, it's Alberta. It's, it's Saskatchewan, you know, uh, it, it's, it's Southern Ontario. It's other provinces are dealing with those same issues. So why is an FCM banging on the table saying, no, we, we got to look at this, right? Um, you know, recruiting police officers is, is going to be a tall order. I mean, it's, it's like trying to get people to take nursing right now. You can't get people to do it, right? But, um, but as far as the bail reform, that's where we got to start, right? And, you know, and, and like the rampant drug use, well, you know, you got to start looking at, you know, across the country, that's where your homelessness is coming in because people are buying drugs, right? They're not, you know, they're not looking after themselves. Oh, so is that, you know, a mental health issue that we need to start looking at, right? So are I you think seeing it play out in rural communities within Manitoba, this homelessness and mental health and addiction? Because I know Lance Jacobson, the mayor of Swan River, said that that's been a big issue for his sort of urban community. And I say that respectfully because he's more rural urban. But yeah. in the rural world, like the rural municipalities, are you seeing this play out more prevalent right now? Not the homelessness so much in rural Manitoba, but in the smaller cities like Swan River, you are seeing that, right? Yeah. Um, but yes, like I said, but the drug use is is rampant throughout the province, right? And I, I think that's where we need to start curbing that, right? And uh, I know, you know, the province has brought out the, the safe injection sites and, you know, they've, they've tried that and, and federally they've tried that as well. But wouldn't that money be better spent on mental health issues like solving that instead of looking at the safe injection sites right so that's where i think you know we need to, to discuss this more for sure what role do you see the members playing on the executive of amm if you're elected do you see as yourself being a top-down president like the executive will direct or will you be engaging with the members outside of those two annual conventions in uh the spring and in the fall I'm just a team leader. We're all one. We're all a team. And that's the way I feel that I'm just a team leader. I'm the guy that's, you know, on top that has to answer all the hard questions, but we're all one. I don't care where, what position you are. And it's the same on council. I mean, I, I'm a Reeve, but at the end of the day, we're, we're all one, right? We're all trying to work together and make these issues happen. Final question for you, Ian, before I let you go, and it's an important one, but why should members put their faith in you and elect you as the next president of the, uh, the Association of Manitoba Municipalities uh, from November 25th to 27th? I'm just making sure I got the dates right here in <laughs> Winnipeg. Yeah, I think it's November 27th, and it's coming quick. Like we're, yeah. we're already end of October, and I really haven't started campaigning yet, but we'll get that done. Um, for sure. Like I said, I, I think, like I said, I, I bring a new, new ideas to the table, uh, press fresh perspective, like I said, to the table. And, uh, I'm very passionate. Anybody that's talked to me over the past two years can know that my passion for municipalities and municipal governments comes through. Right. And, uh, I mean, I've, I've been in it for, like I said, now, you know, two and a half terms and it, it's an addiction of mine. I'm sorry. Like I said, I, I, I love it. Like I said, at the end of the day, and, uh, it doesn't matter what issue we're talking about, homelessness, crime, education, health, zebra mussels, vet issues in the province. You know, it doesn't matter what we talk about. I, I'm I'm game for it all. And uh, and I love a challenge. Right. And I love to talk to, you know, I've, I've had municipal leaders meetings and stuff in Brandon and I've had MLA meetings and I love talking to them about the issues of rural Manitoba and of all of Manitoba. Right. So that's what I said. I, I, I feel that. Um, I would be very good and I, I hope people would put their faith in me. And uh, when people, ever, and I'm very open to talk to you all the time. Like I said, you know, I've had people call me at any time of day, night and text me and I, I'm very open about it. You, you certainly are. And I was so happy that we got to meet in uh, Brandon this spring and looking forward to meeting you. Uh, if, if everything goes to plan, uh, meeting you back <laughs> in Winnipeg, if, uh, if AMM allows me back into the organization to the event, um, 
But I, 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 you said it twice, and I have to ask. This is just the reporter in me, and this might not have to do with anything about this or this uh, interview. But how is the zebra muscle issue going on in Harrison Park? Because I know we talked about it in mm-hmm. uh, at AMM, and you were hoping to hear something from this provincial government. Now we're about eight months after that original interview. Do you have any sense that it is getting solved, and you're getting more inspectors in the area, or are they being coy about it? Yeah, it's been it's been crickets from the province. They they topped up some money in the budget in the spring budget, uh, but it didn't go anywhere near to handling the the amount of inspectors they needed. Right, yeah. um, federally, that's our big issue because we're we're right beside a national park that has zebra mussels now. Like it's confirmed, they found more than one. They found some more again this fall. Uh, very upsetting now to know that. Um, I hope it's not another. You know, I hope they handle it better than they did in Jasper. Like, there's been a lot of talk how the fire is out there and the federal government kind of botched that situation. So now we have to kind of start managing this from, from a municipal side and a province side because the drain coming out of that park goes all the way to Winnipeg, right? So we have to start looking at that and saying, okay, how do we mitigate this drain so that we don't get zebra mussels in all of Western Manitoba, right? So I'm on the AMM um advisory committee for zebra mussels and um, we have to start meeting regularly throughout the next few months here and and really come up with a concrete plan for spring because um we Those don't think spread to- like wildfire they do not There's- they they, yeah. they are not they're they're an invasive species if there's an invasive species that you want to talk about zebra mussels are them i remember yeah. them living in ontario and they were horrible yeah, so we don't want that throughout our province, and that, and it's and let's face it. I mean, that's you know, like that's one of our bigger issues in our municipality right now, because I mean, it's it's stalling development in one community because of the zebra mussels issues, and then we're fighting it in another community and trying to keep it out of all our lakes. So now we're trying to do this balancing act here, and like I said, it's been crickets from the province on it. So now we have to start stepping up and and doing more as municipalities. So that's where I guess the best practices aspect will come from where we can start meeting with other jurisdictions that have dealt with them and kept them out of their lakes and figuring out what's best for us. Well, Ian Reeve, I want to thank you so much for taking time to talk about your bid for AMM uh, presidency, but also zebra mussels, which of course I can't go through an interview without talking about that with you. So I appreciate you taking time to sit down with me. Uh, How can people reach out and connect with you? I'm assuming you're going to be connecting with your municipal leaders from across the province, but is there a way that they can reach out? Is it just your email? Yeah. Like through my email or, or, you know, my cell number, uh, either way, like I said, um, yeah. And I'm going to be meeting with a lot of municipal leaders throughout the next few weeks here. We're just kind of wrapping up our business year. So now we're going to start campaigning hard here in November and, uh, get everybody coming to convention is a big thing. We need people to come out and vote and, uh, we want people to build their executive, right. You know, whether it be the president or the vice president, who do you want to see running AMM? That's what people need to uh, decide and, uh, you know, make your vote count. Right. So I hope people come to convention and, um, and vote because we need people to uh, shape the next two years of AMM for sure. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. Now, we hope you've enjoyed today's conversation with one of Manitoba's leaders who's looking to become the president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upcoming episode. We are trying to sit down with as many of the candidates for president and vice president as possible before the AMM convention in Winnipeg. So your support helps us to continue to grow and bring you more important conversations like you heard today and all of our other other great conversations. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs. Till then, everyone.